All right, here we go. Game two. We've got A's from, uh, I believe, LLA is Latin America, right? And LJL and Detonation Focus Me. That is the Japanese League. Bringing out the Graves. Now, I fully expect this to be an Umbral Glaive Graves. Um, early, early motion. He does have Dark Harvest. So I do think it's going to be this Dark Harvest um, Lethality Build Graves with Umbral Glaive into Eclipse that is based on just full burst damage. Another Wukong in the jungle. Now, this, we weren't sure that we were going to see Wukong all the way. We've always touted Wukong as a strong, underrated jungler. Uh, but two for two, making it through and into MSI. I have, I cannot recall seeing a champion go from like zero presence to suddenly just being busted out like this. We'll see, we'll see if it's a fad uh, or if it makes it through. All, all it will take is a, a few losses and then they'll go out. All right, we've got the late invade from Graves and Orn. Now, Rumble, Rumble Wukong is exceptionally strong at level one. Wukong with the regen and the base stack passive going up and Rumble's damage. Now, they should like this. This is coming to their side. Victor should get out of lane right now. Right now, that minion is not worth it. All right, but look at this extra damage from the Rumble. They're just going to win this. The late invade. Graves is strong, but not strong enough to sustain against a rumble. Like, look at that damage. Wukong goes in, f was able to secure wolves while the invade was happening to get level two to be able to crush that fight. That is the best play that you could make. If you're getting invaded, go to the same side camp that they don't see, especially if it's a blue invade. Just take your wolves. It's an easy camp to take early. You'll take it fairly quickly. And you'll hit level two. And then either you can then take the fight because you're level two and you took it quickly. Or you just have a camp lead going into the next quadrant. They're going to try to full invade, take your full quadrant. Instead, they're going to see that you took the wolves. Now you've already moved into their north quadrant or whatever it is. And you're going to take the next three camps before they even realize it. At least the buff. All right, so let's see. We've got Renata Glask versus Nautilus. Engage versus Counter Engage. Renata is exceptionally strong. Uh, these these players are going to be much better at playing against her, though. Spacing, she's got fairly low range, but as the fights do break out, especially around the pits, very very strong scaling champion. Uh, Nautilus should be strong, but looking like they're playing it pretty passively. Used a minion dematerializer on the cannon. Uh, under turret rather than just going for the auto attacks. Well, this is a mistake. All right, they get that extra damage. Udipon and Harp, familiar faces. Udipon's been here before. Happy to see Rumble up in the top wave. Doran's Ring being used for the health and AP. And of course, since you don't have mana, every unit you kill is going to have a slight heal. So it's like having a Doran's Shield, but better. First gank of the day, Graves using EW to blind. You use it as a combo, right? Your casting animation on the W will basically be ignored by the travel time of the E. When you do that, you put the smoke screen down. They can't see the Syndra stun coming in. Uh, exceptional combination there. There you see the power of Renata on the, on the continuation fight. There we go, another smoke screen, playing it forward. Rumble doing a good job getting the empowered shield out. Samira bites the dust. Now you're seeing these Lucians in the bot lane. It took a while for it to catch on, but ever since the changes where Lucian is strong with enchanters, dealing an extra, what is it, 32 damage? on auto attacks while he's being buffed. That is an exceptional amount of damage. All right. Very, very noteworthy for your games, right? Like pair Lucian with enchanters. Used to be that you always played Lucian with the hard engage, right? But 
Not so much here. Syndra love the play into Victor. Normally you do get a little bit outranged over time, but your hard engage does outrange the Victor. Use the shield. There. Ooh, well timed from Harp. Casting the Q as the duration on Samira's windshield was down. Samira, not the early game champion that she once was. She's now a scaling champion. Eight patches in a row that affected her end game. All of them. Eight in a row. Count it. Eight. Some of them came with nerfs to the early game. Some of them were just buffs. But eight in a row made her stronger in scaling. So Lucian can have these advantages. Renata Lucian is a very deadly combination. As far as compositions go, you do have long range engage from Syndra and from Orn. If either one of them is able to hit a long range multi man knock up or stun, then that should empower Renata to get the Berserk off. Um, Berserk can be exceptionally good against champions like Rundle, uh, Rumble, Wukong, Samira. Even a Nautilus with the Root can be very good. And around these pits, this low range composition of of A's is going to be kind of risky into into the into the uh, ultimatum there. When was the change that allowed Wukong to go over walls? Well, this is a uh, stomp. Patch, 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 patch. Patch. Cooldown. New effect can now dash over terrain. 12-9. No, this is 12-7. So as of 12-7, cooldown reduced to 8-6 to six from 9-7. to seven. Helps with the jungling, of course. Cooldown reduced by 4 at higher ranks and can now dash over terrain. This is so clutch. AP ratio, doesn't really matter. Damage against monsters increased to 180% from 150. So the extra attack speed is uh, vital in the early clear as well. This is just very, very strong. Uh, man, dashing over, I actually missed that. All right, let's resume. So this is looking like a stomp. You do have plenty of scaling with Renata and Orn. The Graves with Dark Harvest only has probably one, maybe two stacks here. Level 6 being hit on the Wukong all the way at 8 minutes is very, very late. Issuing the Herald to move forward over here. Let's see if he dashes this wall. No? Didn't pull it out either. It looked like he meant to. So let's see. You should always pull it out of the pit. If you're the blue team, you want to get it away from the wards. Move it to the left or to the right. So that you've got the coverage of the walls. So that they don't know how much health it's at. You can deny information for as long as possible. You've got Rumble crushing into the Orn, of course, being benefited by that early level one. Wukong getting wrapped on 4v1. This is trouble. Where's the team? Your team has priority, but where are they going? Using everything on the tr on the clone, the decoy. They just come up with numbers. They move up. Now, the price that they're going to pay for this, Victor decided to hover rather than push. But Samira does get two full waves in the bottom side and getting plates. There's going to be a long time before Lucian comes over. Now, one thing I don't like about this, when you do make this change, the actual best rotation is to send Orn back 
to cover solo and you bring your bot laner with the Rift Herald to the top lane, you break that lane, you get the extra gold, then you recall, then you use that money to stomp in the bot lane. When you bring your entire team over, right? So you bring your entire team over, you give the Rift Herald to the Lucian, use it in the top wave to break everything in a 3v1, support jungler and bot while Orn holds bottom, you end up giving up nothing, or you give up the one wave in the pre-rotation, and then Lucian gets to come back with a pocket full of cash. And we've already seen what it did in game one. Once Lucian gets that Gale Force, it is a completely different champion. Speaking of different champions, Syndra with blue buff is a different champion. Spamming everything, Insta clears the wave while also harassing. There's a little trick you can do. Yep. All right. Nope. Don't cut anymore. If you, uh, when you're blue side in the southern quadrant, you can actually pull that red buff into that grass bush. You pull it all the way. You overstep while it's chasing you. It will lose patience. But then you step back in, and actually the easternmost tip of that bush is actually still in the in the threat the uh, the leash radius of the red buff. So you can actually take that red buff from that grass without ever presenting a target to your enemies. All right, Graves very slow on the farm, only 58 CS with only one assist. So very slow game for the junglers. Obviously that level one, you know, Graves got completely outplayed. But since then, the rest of the team has just absolutely dominated this game they have given up they have hemorrhaged 1k from their lead they had a 3k lead it's down to two and this was the benefit of uh the price that they paid for picking up the herald so samir doing a good job getting those two waves and the plate to get to satisfy some extra gold advantage but apart from that they need to find a good use for this rift herald or watch it whittle away. Now we do see the Umbral Glaive picked up by the Graves. Beautiful item that you can get super early into the game. You're also going to see that he has Zombie Ward almost definitely. Which means he's going to get a spike in a attack damage. While also clearing the jungle at all times. Uh, allows him to constantly be playing from, from darkness, from the fog. And you basically just hover every single gank that the enemy team makes. You're willing to show up second. You throw down a smoke screen, you disrupt the information. So right now, for example, they get to rotate down bottom. They've got four champions coming down here, and Graves knows that they don't know. So we'll see if how much they go for this. This is a Renata. The windshield is down from Samira. They're looking to give solo gold to the Lucian. Not quite solo. It will be shared by the Graves. But Lucian stepping up here, gets the plate by himself, ensures that he gets the other hit. One thing you don't need to do, a lot of people do, they step into the turret range, thinking that you need to do that to get the gold. Once you hit the turret, you are now on a 1,000 bonus, bonus range leash for getting the extra gold from the turret. So you can actually step away all the way back to about your own bush, the alcove bush towards your own turret. You can get it all the way from back there if you hit the turret. And of course, whoever drops... The Rift Herald will be able to get the gold no matter what. All right, Detonation Focus Me trying to get these early invades uh, rotations. They get the bot lane turret down. Lucian with a Gale Force Plus looking to stomp on this game. I'm not a big fan of the Ninja of the Plated Steel Caps coming out. I think that he's just nervous about the Samira damage coming in. But a large part of the chunk of damage that's coming their way is going to be from range, from a victor, and from a from a rumble ultimate. So let's see. Extra plate to the rumble. Rumble not messing around. Orn willing to play back. So look at this. Detonation focus me. Summit, if you're watching, take a lesson. Too soon? When you... When you are unsure what's going to be happening and your team is recalling, step back. Don't risk it. Do not let the other team make a play for free. By staying up there, you're just presenting a target. Whether or not they think they can do it, they're actually you're just giving them the information that you are there for a potential play. If you step back, 
Give up two minions. It's not a big deal. Deny them the information. By denying them that, your entire team gets to take their recall. You deny the information to the enemy saying, oh, Orn's the only ones left on the map. Let's go gank. There's nothing else to do. Let's just play a 4v1 in the top lane or whatever you want. Just don't even give them that option. Of course, some uh, apparently refusing to play. To play Orn may be less relevant for him. Ooh, I don't like this rumble. You don't have the information. They've been gone for 10 seconds from mid. You do not need to take that ward to yourself. Risking way too much. Barely getting out. Might actually be able to get a return kill. No, just a straight up kill first. Renata with the ultimate. They're, they're going to take way too much damage here. Lucian does arrive. Oof. I, all right, so that play by Rumble going that deep, not necessary. Also not that necessary for the team to chase the Rumble into the pits there. They almost secure it. If the whole team was already there to back you up, then yes, you take that You take that play 100%. What are we doing, Harong? Syndra. Your team recalled. You got to do what the Orn did. Your team's recalling. You've got to back off. No matter who you are, doesn't matter how much of a lead you have, if your team is recalling... You know that you cannot possibly have a numbers advantage in whatever endeavor you decide to take. Back off. You got to step back. All right. A's does take that advantage of the Cinder Death. They're going to turn that into a Rift Herald take. We've got a flash from Victor. Able to get the W down as well. I swear Victor's a much stronger champion in zero ping. Although they may not be playing on zero ping, right? Is this confirmed whether or not they're playing on 30 ping to accommodate the Chinese teams? Did they? There was a lot of protests from the other teams saying there's, you know, if their region wants to boycott, like let them, let them not come. Viet Vietnam did not come for multiple years. Why? Why are you making people play in reduced in in? amplified ping scenarios to accommodate the LPL. A lot of people might say, well, you know, defending champs and everything else regarding this. We want to, you know, it's it's good to be a regular, we'll say. The Chinese teams, super popular, a lot of viewership, so they want to include them. I think that's basically what's going to dictate their choice there is that they've got an extra 20 million fans in China that uh, that they're trying to accommodate, and that's a lot of money for viewership. The dollar pays, right? But I don't know. Let me know in the chat if, if you know for sure, if you have gotten confirmation. Oh, nice play by the Wukong. That was sick. Using that W to dash to dodge the stun. But yeah, yeah. do we know for sure whether or not they're on ping or not? The, the plan was to put everyone on 30 ping to make it fair. All right, let's see how they set up. They have the gold lead on detonation focus me, but they are late to the river. Apparently, A's does not know this, though, because they're throwing skill shots into the bushes. You see mad pings coming out. Look at the wards from red team. They basically saw all the rotations. They know that they get a free priority in the push for middle. They get to take that wave up, push it up, and then move in from the left side of the dragon pit. And then secure themselves an area. Graves also exceptional in this position. Right? Look at those zombie wards. Just tacking up. Of course, now on Burglave, it doesn't matter if you are a cast a ranged champion, you are still going to one-shot those wards. Now they're going to take this position. Evie was there, was able to get the Herald. Let's see if Blue can start the dragon, knowing that Orn is not quite there. Wow, interesting. Orn's willing to actually teleport in to be their front line. Let's see how well they're able to dodge this. Rumble, exceptionally strong in this situation. But so is Renata. You see this team refusing to go into the pit. They are hovering to the outside. And you notice this long line. There we go. They're using 
the R from Rumble as a way to just buy space. The instinct is always for a team to kite backwards. You have to resist that urge in that situation. You have to kite forwards to be able to come make this play. They might find an engage now. So they use the equalizer from Rumble to create a knee-jerk response to back away. That gives them the room to move up and burst the dragon. Of course, the Renata extra percent damage. Uh, plus Graze on Lethality extra and Lucian obviously dealing tons of damage early. Alright, take a peek. The Cloth Armor from Lucian has opted not to go into the Plated Steel Caps, as we were hoping. Apparently just wants the extra stats. That makes a lot more sense, right? As Lucian, you can dodge out of the majority of Rumble's damage. Uh, Victor's probably only ever going to hit you with one spell. So that extra cloth armor saying, okay, the people who can actually fight me right now are Samira and Wukong. We'll just get a little bit of armor just to stack it up, unless they just straight up change their mind. But a little bit of armor can go a long way. Maybe at some point they turn this into a death dance. You might see death dance into, into Infinity Edge, or you might see something like Essence Reaver being far more common for Lucian. Keep those mana costs reasonable. Syndra up taking these side waves. The Victor did his job, pushed the wave all the way up. You see Rumble clearing the bot side. They're going to do this quickly. He's got teleport up, so no huge rush from him. Uh, red team holding mid, moving together. Orn is with the team and with the graves. They're going to get all these wards down. And now they're going to move, presumably, Syndra into the bot lane because her teleport is up. Graves is picking up all of these zombie wards. And look at this just peripheral vision. Syndra not coming with the rumble. They're sending Orn. This is interesting. Now Orn, two problems with Orn. One is that you don't actually win this fight. Or they decide to do it with a Syndra teleport. So now they have a chance actually at winning it. Did not need to flash there. But now you have no teleports, two players in the bot lane. Correct answer from blue would be to, to Zerg the Baron right now. Force enemy team to come into them with numbers down. They would have very little counterplay. They'd have to stall with their gunsmen. Maybe a little bit too afraid of the Renata ultimate. But basically the, the rumble with that push, they catch with a ward, a teleport from the Syndra. Nice play for the catch. Was exploitable. Let's see if Aze is willing to pull the trigger on the next play. Look at this lack of vision. Now Wukong, all you know, supreme, you know, benefits from the Divine Sunder, of course, but also a pretty good user of the Umbral Glaive. Lethality is just fine on Wukong. You get a bunch of that early damage. And it's so inexpensive, right? 2,300 gold to have the vision advantage, especially on a champion like Wukong that wants to come in from a flank. Seems like the next iteration. It's very early in the Wukong days. I do love that that champion's being played. That champion is a lot of fun. Probably the next one that this guy right here is going to be using to climb up. All right, they decide they opt out of the contestation. They're just going to leave it here. They get one wave mid. Samira gets a buff, and they're going to have inside track for the dragon. But that being said, it's only D2 for them. Even if it were D3, they're going to lose so much off of this Baron that I don't like their chances of actually turning anything here, any kind of uh, meaningful advantage. Look at that Nautilus Ward, by the way. Not in the bush. You get more vision by putting it outside the bush. It sees anyone who would go into the bush. The only thing it doesn't see is in the bush itself. But if you can infer that information, why would you not go get the ward deeper? A little bit deeper, sees that crosshair. You catch that cross section of anyone trying to get to the wolf camps. Let's see how they move over. Lonely stepping back. What is Lonely doing? A very safe 
traverse into the top wave. Now, this happens to be a fantastic answer because Detonation is looking to counter with full Western Quadrant vision and a play on the top side, but Rumble can actually equalize this to push them off of it. Now, it is Empowered Minions by Baron, so they you shouldn't actually get the full benefit of the equalizer damage there. The second wave is going to come in and chunk this out. It is four versus two. Graves, again, keeping all this vision advantage from range. This should be a free turret for them. Watch out for Syndra knockbacks over the wall. If you use the Syndra ball, if it can make it more than halfway over a rock, then when your E pushes through, it will get the full extension damage on the other side. It will originate its damage, its uh, distance, I should say, from the other side of the arrival point, the exit point of the rock, I should say. All right, let's take stock a little bit. We've got Fimble Winter and Chemtank from the Orn. One thing I like to see from Orn players is actually the no mythic build. You go Fimble Winter and Glacial Augment. You use all that extra health. Or we got a fight breaking out. Let's see. Good positioning by De Detonation. Focus me. They wrap on the singular targets. Notice that people do not overcommit. They just focus and they wrap on the singular target. Samira going for a play, but Steel going in with attack move already pressed. Of course, if you use attack move to get into the grass faster than you could ever react, if someone does come out of that grass, you will instantaneously auto attack them. So always something you should do when you're moving into bushes. Use that attack move command. Apart from that early hiccup in the jungle where they have that extended fight, Syndra with the push on the victor made it exciting when it shouldn't have been. It should have just been a blowout by blue team. Uh, but ever since then, Detonation focused me just running right away with this game. They take down everything. 1-0. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps the channel out a lot. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep it surreal. Peace.